Hello and welcome to MPS webinar on POE standards introduction and key design considerations. My name is Catherine Huang, a senior manager of product marketing. With me is also Dee Han. Dee, could you please introduce yourself? Hi, this is Dee Han. I am the supervisor of technical marketing and systems applications engineer at, at MPS. Thank you, Dee. So for today's webinar, there will be two sections. Uh, the first part will be the standards overview, which I will cover. And then after that, D will go over the technical portion that introduces our device and how it can be used in a 25 watt PD and the key design considerations. So as I said, today's agenda includes um, an overview of different POE standards. Um, and we focus a little bit more on the details um, of the latest POE standard, IEEE 802.3BT. After that, um, D will go through a design example with our device. So for POE, um, in places, where power lines are not available, POE systems are used to leverage for dual purpose, to pass data and also power. Power devices, PD, such as IP phone, IP cameras, access points, routers, lighting terminals are connected to a power source equipment or PSE, and then that connects to a server. This diagram here is an illustration of a complete PoE network. PoE power supplies are very widely used. Many of you are fam familiar with the, the earlier PoE standards, the IEEE AO2.3AF and IEEE AO2.3AT standards that cover 15 watts and 25 watt output power. Then most recently in 2018-19, IEEE AO2.3BT standard or POE++ was ratified. It can support up to 90 watts and have added features like auto classification and lower standby power. Within each POE standard, there are different power classes. For example, 802.3AF has three power classes from four watts to 15 watts. AO2.3AT has only one, which is 30 watts. And AO2.3BT has up to four power classes, ranging from 45 to 90 watts. This slide here shows how PSE communicates with the power device PD. First is detection phase. The PSE has to determine, has to, to determine the impedance on the port whether or not there is a presence of a legitimate PD. In order to identify that, it, uh, it um, for example, for a dot AT PD, the impedance is 25 kilo ohms. So once the device is detected, the next step is classification to determine the power level of the PD and supported features. So for example, for dot AF and AT, there are two events that classify the power levels. For dot BT, there are five events. So once the PSE determine um, what PD is connected, now the PD this is how this slide uh, shows the PD communicates to the PSE during the classification event. In which case, the PD draws a signature current. 
the different classes of power require different levels of signature current as shown in the table. So classes one through four pertain to the dot AF and AT standards, whereas classes five through eight pertain to dot BT standard. One of the unique features of the dot BT standard is the auto classification feature, which allows the PSC to, de to determine the real, ma real maximum power of the connected PDs so that it can allocate the power to the PDs intelligently. The PD power in dot BT is more adaptive. This is different because in dot AF, AT standard, the power is defined and fixed by the class level. The two waveforms in this slide show the PSE classification voltage waveforms and the different signature current levels generated by the PD. The long first class PSE voltage pulse and the, the PD signature current going to zero indicate the auto classification function. Dot BT standard also requires a lower minimum DC current during standby mode, which reduces the standby consumption. As shown in the top waveform, the duty cycle for the current is much smaller. Dot AF and dot AT support power transfer through two pairs of wiring, while dot BT support four pairs. And this enables Higher power, trans, uh, uh, higher power ratings required by dot BT. So as you can see, there are benefits to using the dot BT standard. For applications requiring higher power, like 45 watts to 90 watts, dot BT is the right choice. Furthermore, the auto classification function allows the system to operate more intelligently. It's also more green due to the lower standby power requirements. So we just went over the um, different standards. And next, I'm going to um, let Dehan cover the technical portion with design considerations for um, a 25 watt PD design using our MP8009. Okay, so MPS MP8009 features an all-in-one PD solution that's compatible with IEEE A02.3 AT or AF standard. It's more optimized than competitor solution in terms of overall size due to smaller IC package, reduced number of caps resistors eliminated optocoupler and feedback components, enhanced EMI performance, and lower overall bound cost. This PD solution has already passed Ethernet Alliance certification, and we are updating the datasheet to show the certification marking. So to start the design, we first confirm the PoE standard and power level to support. Then we need to determine the output voltage according to application requirements. The typical output voltages are five volt and 12 volts. MPS main.at PD solution is MP8009. And depending on the requirements, we provide readily designed examples to support either five volts or 12 volts output. Here is the schematic for a 25 watts, uh, 12 volts output design as an example. 
A POE design has several main areas. The PWM switching circuit as shown in green, uh, filter, filtering as shown in red, and isolation as shown in yellow. We can narrow the key design considerations to four. Uh, first is the power conversion circuit, which we will discuss the converter topology. Then how to choose the right transformer. Then we'll cover some thermal considerations. And lastly, how to optimize the circuit for best EMI performance. Flyback converters are widely used in PoE PD solutions. Compared with the traditional secondary side regulation, regulated flyback, MPS PD solution with integrated primary side regulated flyback controller eliminates optocoupler and TL431 to save space and cost. The output voltage affects the selection of the transformer. A 12 volt output has a higher voltage rating than five volts, but requires less current and therefore can use the transformer with smaller core. Here, EP13 is a smaller sized core compared to EFD20 and can save cost. With an EP13 transformer for 12 or 25 watts design, the key parameters that come to mind are core size, magnetizing inductance LP, and turns ratio N. Smaller size cores with less cross-sectional area needs a smaller magnetizing inductance to prevent saturation. The turns ratio is chosen such that an appropriate duty cycle and reasonable voltage stress on the switches can be achieved. MPS reference designs can be leveraged to help you optimize the core size, inductance, and turns ratio for each application. Thermal or efficiency is another important consideration in a PD design. The components like MOSFETs, output diode, and transformer dissipate the most heat. Try to use MOSFETs with the lowest RDS on gate charge and VDS rating up to 150 volts. The output diode's voltage drop should be less than 0.4 volts. Design a transformer with the DCR less than 150 milliohm for the primary and less than 10 milliohm for the secondary, as well as having low leakage inductance. Here are a few considerations and practices that can help improve EMIMC performance of a PD design. First of all, MP8009 supports frequency spec spectrum function, which attenuates both conducted emission CE and radiated emission RE of the power supply. Secondly, MPL-AL5050 family inductors are good candidates for differential mode filters. Third, common of chokes are also effective in attenuating RE of the power supply, hence can be used if necessary. Other measures such as having RCD's number, i.e. this number with resistor, capacitor, and dial for the primary MOSFET, RC's number for the secondary dials, Y cap across isolation boundary, and gate drive resistance 
all help to improve the RE performance. Finally, a good layout with small high frequency current loop and small switching node area is also critical. In addition to the design consideration I just discussed, having a good snubber design will also alleviate the voltage stress on the MOSFETs and diodes. Furthermore, for primary side regulated flyback, having a minimum load is needed for low cost design or else output voltage will rise up and get out of control. For most PoE systems, due to the requirement on 10 milliamp maintained power signature current, a domino is only needed during power board debug. MPS PoE solutions cover .AF, .AT, and .BT specs with different PD controllers. We offer standalone PD controller and power supply chips, as well as integrated PD solutions. MP8030 is MPS all-in-one PD solution compatible with IEEE A02.3BT standard. It features internal detection resistor, internal pass switch, automatic maintain power signature, and auto class functions. It supports topologies, including primary side regulated flyback, secondary side regulated flyback, secondary, secondary side regulated active clamp forward and comes with frequency spread spectrum function. Here are four MP8030 reference designs covering 51 watt and 71 watt, 5 volt and 12 volt output voltages, forward and primary side regulated flyback topologies. This is the 5 volt 71 watt forward design. The input bridges use half the diodes and half the MOSFETs for good trade off between design complexity and power loss. EFT20 size transformer is used, and optocoupler feedback is needed for this topology. It achieves 92.6% efficiency and 53 degree C maximum temperature rise. This slide shows the 12 volt 71 watt forward design. It achieves 94% efficiency and 43 degree C maximum temperature rise. This is the 12 volt, 27 watt primary side regulated flyback design. In this design, EFD25 sized transformer is used and circuit com complexity is reduced due to the primary side feedback. It can achieve 93.3% efficiency and 49 degree C max temperature rise. Lastly, we have the 12 volt 51 watt forward design with EP13 size transformer. This transformer size is the smallest among the four reference designs. It can achieve 92.5% efficiency and 46 degrees C maximum temperature rise. That's the end of this presentation. Thanks for watching. Yes, thank you.